Let's talk about the closing entries and why accountants record them. There are four steps or tasks that accountants must complete to close the ledgers for any accounting period. Why do accountants close the ledgers? We spend all this time setting up all these accounts and posting to them. Why are we now closing them? It's important that accountants be able to report on each accounting period separately rather than commingle the numbers with another accounting period. However, we won't close all of the accounts, only those that are temporary accounts. Do you recall what temporary and permanent accounts are? The temporary account is an account that begins each fiscal year with a zero balance. At the end of the year, its ending balance is shifted to a different account ready to be used again in the next fiscal year to accumulate a new set of transactions. Temporary accounts include revenue and expense accounts and owner's withdrawals and dividends. So what are those four steps? First, we'll close all of the revenue accounts and those income statement accounts that have credits to an account called income summary. Step two is to close all expense accounts and all other income statement accounts with debits to the account income summary. We close the income summary account to the capital account and then we close the owner's withdrawals and dividends to the capital account as well. After the closing entries have been posted, the capital account reflects the results of the operations for the period. Let's look at the process step by step. Step one of the closing process involves closing out all revenue accounts and any other income statement account with credit balances to income summary. There's only one income statement account that is a revenue account, and we don't have any other credit balances in our income statement. So let's close out the fees income account, which has a credit balance of $47,000. How do we close out the account? We debit the account for $47,000. What account do we need to credit? That's right, income summary. And there you have it. Let's write that journal entry into the general ledger, journal. The first step is write closing entries on the first line, followed by writing the date on the second line into the date columns. Next, we'll write fees income into the description and the amount of $47,000 into the debit column. On the next line, we slightly indent and write income summary into the description column and the amount of $47,000 into the credit column. We're now ready for step two of the closing process. Step two of the closing process involves closing out all expense accounts and any other income statement accounts with debit balances to income summary. There are five income statement accounts that are expense accounts. So let's close out the expense accounts, which all together add up to $13,333. How do we close out the expense accounts? We debit income summary first for $13,333, and then credit each expense account. Let's write that journal entry into the general journal. We'll write the date into the date columns, and next we'll write income summary into the description and the amount of 13,333 into the debit column. On the next line, we slightly indent and write salaries expense into the description column and the amount of $8,000 into the credit column. On the next line, we again slightly indent and write utilities expense into the description column and the amount of $650 into the credit column. On the next line, we'll write supplies expenses and a credit of $500, followed by rent expense and $4,000 on the next line. And lastly, we'll write the depreciation expense equipment 
on the next line and a credit of $183. That's it for step two. We're now ready for step three of the closing process. Now that we cleared the income statement and moved all revenue and expense accounts to the income summary account, we need to determine the balance in that account. Why? It's an additional check that the amount is our net income and we can compare it to our worksheet to ensure that it is the same amount. In our case, we have a balance of $33,667, and it's the same amount that we had on our worksheet. We're now ready to transfer that amount to the owner's capital account. We debit income summary first for $33,667, and then credit the Trade and Eli capital account. Let's write that journal entry into the general journal. We'll write the date into the date columns, and next we'll write income summary into the description in the amount of 33,667 into the debit column. On the next line, we'll slightly indent and write Payton Eli Capital Account into the description column in the amount of 33,667 into the credit column. The last step in our four-step closing process involves closing the last temporary accounts, the drawing account and the dividend account to the owner's capital account. We have a drawing account with a debit balance of $5,000, which we need to close out to the owner's capital account. We debit Trade and Eli Capital and then credit Trade and Eli Drawing. Let's write the journal entry into the general journal. We'll write the date into the date columns. And next, we'll write Trade and Eli Capital into the description and the amount of $5,000 into the debit column. On the next line, we slightly indent and write Trade and Eli Drawing Account into the description column and the amount of $5,000 into the credit column. There you have it. The four steps of the closing process include one, close revenue, two, close expense accounts, three, close income summary, and four, close the drawing account. The next step is to post the journal entries into the general ledger.